So this spring and summer, Katie and I are preaching this uh, sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit near the end of his powerful letter to the churches in Galatia. Paul has this list of Christian virtues, which he calls the fruit of the Spirit. I'm calling them facets of faithfulness. Paul writes to the Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And then from the Hebrew scriptures, I wanted to, you to hear one of the most beloved songs from the Hebrew Psalter, Psalm 103, which is about the patience of God. I will read the verses, and at my indication, would you please respond with the refrain that's printed in your bulletins. It is God who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Mighty One will not always accuse, nor will God hold anger forever. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear the Lord. As far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear God. For God knows how we were made. God remembers that we are dust. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last August, I'm playing golf with my son Michael at this little golf course in the Leelanau where we go every August. We're playing the sixth hole, 430 yards, par four. By some inscrutable miracle, my tee shot ends up within yards of Michael's, right in the middle of the fairway. The sprinkler head tells me I'm only 170 yards from the pin. Good lie, straight in the middle of the fairway. And so I pull out my five iron to make this shot, but then I notice that Michael is brandishing his seven iron. And so I asked my son, I said, Michael, do you think I can get to the green with a seven iron too? And he gets a sly smile on his face, and he says, eventually. <laughs> and sure enough, three seven irons later, there I am, <laughs> right next to the green. All I need is a sand wedge to dig myself out of the trap up to the pin. I nailed that hole with a triple bogey seven. Yes. You see where a little patience can get you. 
some advice for you. If you want to learn patience, there are two ways you can do that. You could take a Bible study with your spiritual director or play golf with him. You will learn patience, I guarantee it. One of the aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, says Paul to the Galatians, is macrothumia. That's the Greek word he use, uses. The NRSV translates it as patience. Now, macrothumia is a compound word, and happily, you know the first part of it. Macro is the opposite, obviously, of micro. Macroscopic versus microscopic. It's large or long. This congregation has more MBAs than they have at Wharton or Kellogg, so we know the difference between macroeconomics and microeconomics. So much for macro. Thumia means smoke or burn. The Greek word for incense is a form of the word thumia, to cause to go up in smoke. Now, with the ancient Greeks, as with us, word pictures for anger often have to do with fire or smoke or heat. Literally, thumia means smoke. Figuratively, it came to mean anger or hotness, so that we can say Jim Harbaugh was so mad there was smoke coming out of his ears. So macrothumia is then quite literally the long smoke. Macrothumia is the long fuse, the slow burn, the tortoise-like temper. Love is patient, says the Revised Standard Version. Love suffereth long, says the old King James. Macrothumia is the sailor shipwrecked four miles from land, but he can see it and he'll get there eventually. Macrothumia is the doctor or the nurse who cares for the terminal patient up to and beyond the brink of death, past all hope of recovery. Macrothumia is the young mother who plays shoots and ladders with her three-year-old 19 times in a row and manages to lose every single time. Now, of course, we live in a very impatient age. The microwave, Google, Instagram, Snapchat, Instagram, Snapchat. So it's for good reason that lately the phrase instant gratification has become a cliche. Just for fun between the services, I googled Golden Retriever, did a search on Google for Golden Retriever, and Google came up with 112 million web pages in 0.96 seconds. So the frenetic pace of YouTube's microsecond camera shots has trained us out of any possible appreciation for Alfred Hitchcock's leisurely film scenes. And our trillion gigabyte per millisecond processors, or whatever, have trained us out of the patience it took till not long ago to trudge through endless stacks of books and journals to find the tiny fact or the big idea that will nail the sermon, the presentation, the report, or an essay for history class. So the alacrity with which I reach for Google instead of a theology text alarms me. I am dumbing myself down every day. Did you know that my microwave oven is too small for my Thanksgiving Day turkey? That is just so wrong. <laughs> some of you 20-somethings out there may have done some speed dating. 20 strangers in 60 minutes. Now this is all wonderful. I'm glad for it all. I love fast food and easy pass and express lanes at the Jewel or on the Edens. Google is teaming up with Harvard, Michigan, Stanford, the New York Public Library, and the Library of Congress to put 1.5 million books on the internet for free, for nothing, from where you sit. Their goal is 15 million books, instantaneously. There's never been a better time to be alive. It's just that when technology bleeds most of the waiting out of life, we get very bad at it. Our parents and grandparents were different. If you live on a farm, you are by nature patient. You must be. You wait for the rains. You wait for the germination. You wait for the bugs and the weeds and the worms. You wait for the fruit to swell. You wait for the harvest. You wait for a customer to buy your produce. 
just by naturally living that life, maybe against your will. You learn the art of patience. But that's all gone for us now. We don't know how to wait for anything, but all waiting has not been squeezed out of life. And so that when it becomes necessary to wait for something, for the chemotherapy to work, for love to arrive, for the conception of a child, for a worthy investment to mature, we don't know how to do it. We're just bamboozled. Still, patience is a central and necessary virtue for the Christian life because we are created in the image of God. And if nothing else, God is patient. Psalm 103, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in compassion. Read patience for God's children. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God is the definition of macrothumia. The long fuse, the slow burn, the tortoise-like temper. And we, the Imago Dei, the image of God, must recapitulate that same slow burn and long fuse. The copy must be a faithful stamp of the original. And so if God does not deal with us according to our iniquities, why should we deal with each other according to their iniquities? How could we live without patience? How could we live if we fixed in undying memory our neighbor's every mistake or annoyance? How could we live if she did the same with us? How could we live if we rescinded a covenant when it no longer suits our purpose? How could we live if we demanded that a nine-year-old not act like a nine-year-old? How could we live without the long fuse and the slow burn and the tortoise-like temper? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my own advice this morning. Here's a preacher who will be converted by his own sermon. I'm going to stop using the phrase, he won't suffer fools gladly, as a compliment. Do you do this too? When you want to praise someone's intelligence, you say, she won't suffer fools gladly. What you mean to say is that she's so smart she has no patience with idiots. She's so superior she has no time for anybody who's not as smart as she is. Now why is that a compliment? Love is patient, says St. Paul to the Corinthians. Love suffereth long. God suffereth long with fools. God suffereth long with me. We're all fools at something. My Princeton philosophy professor Diogenes Allen puts it so beautifully and so simply. He says, it takes time to discover worth. Yes, see what he means? He means that we are all treasures and blessings one to another, but that treasure comes in a cracked clay vessel, halt and lame, in a husk, coarse and discolored and one of the greatest gifts I can give another human being, my wife, my daughter, my colleague, my friend, is the space and time to develop in her own way, at her own pace, into her own true self, and not my way, my pace, and myself. Anne Lamott says, Patience is when God or someone makes the now a little roomier. Could you make the now a little roomier for someone you love or even for someone you don't? Time is a funny thing, right? Sometimes time flies and sometimes time drags. Time is relative. Einstein taught us that this is literally true. Time and space are relative to the speed of light. A second is not a second, and a meter is not a meter. Meter. Time is relative, literally, and figuratively, too. Time is relative to the context in which we experience it. And sometimes time flies. My wife and I married off our youngest child, my daughter, to a wonderful man this weekend. 
And when it was all over, we looked at each other and said, where did the years go? We were so proud of our family planning. You know, first of all, we had one of each, a son and a daughter. Okay, we didn't plan that. God did, but still. We also arranged it so that they would be four and a half years apart. We did this so that we would have only one college tuition to pay at a time and only one wedding to deal with at a time. That didn't work out so well, but we tried. Four and a half years apart, which meant that when my daughter was entering kindergarten, my son was already in the fifth grade, and that when she went into middle school, Michael was already a sophomore in high school. She's way younger than my older. And as the youngest, Taylor was always scrambling to keep up with the rest of us. Michael loved to spar verbally with his parents and conversation around the dinner table in my house was fast and furious and we'd all be sitting there telling a joke or telling a story and when we got to the punchline we would laugh raucously but Taylor was too young she didn't get it she would say wait what what just happened why are you laughing I don't get it That was her familiar refrain at my house. Wait, what? And then after the wedding, Kathy and I decided, now it's our turn to say, wait, what? Where did the years go? You're a fourth grade teacher? You live in Washington, D.C.? You're getting married? Did we do a good enough job? How did you get all grown up? Wait, what? Sometimes time flies, sometimes time drags. And when time flies, the facet of faithfulness we need is joy, right? Because the days might be long, but the years are short, and they are then gone. And so we need to attend to it, to enjoy it, to enjoy all of God's gifts to us. And when time drags, that's when we need the gift of patience, that facet of faithfulness. The universe, they tell us, is something like 15 billion years old. And so far as we know, it's only been in the last 2 million years or so that there has been anything in that universe that can talk back to God. Anyone with whom God could have a conversation. Now, is that patience or what? Does God know how to wait? So can we trust that God has a plan for it, for us, for all? And can we wait for that and for each other to reach the full stature of our humanity? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, we magnify your name because you are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Help us to be more like you with the slow burn, the long fuse, the tortoise-like temper. Amen.